Welcome to the Lockdown Biz Podcast at episode 19, and I believe it's been a long time since we've been here, so it's great to be back. You're listening to the Biz Podcast with Caleb and Max. And the bronze mic is, wait, that's not right, the golden microphone is on. So on this podcast, it looks like we're going to be talking about definitely what is it how to pace yourself for a 7k run psyching out your opponent and swimming coaching yeah sounds pretty good so we're on uh, episode 19 my goodness care it's been a very long time it's it? a long way yeah so we've come a long all, way Max, it's been a bit... what do you think yeah. of the 7k run oh the bay run um or oh, any 7k run at least uh it's it's a very long run very tiring very <laughs> mentally draining but uh okay here's my some... question would you yeah. rather run a 75% 7K run or an all-out 800? Oh, <laughs> now the thing is, I, I I love long distance. Sprinting's never really been my thing, so I'd, I'd say 75% 7K. Well, sometimes I'd say, I reckon yeah. they're just how about you, Caleb? each other. Definitely the 7K. Yeah, how, how... <laughs> yeah. Because, no, because the, it's the annoying thing is if you if you don't know how to run it, it's the event that you don't know whether it's a full-on sprint or a distance, like yeah. 400. Imagine that, right between yeah, 200 and 800. Yeah. 200 a full sprint, 800's like semi. Like, if you don't know how to run, yeah. you will and... suffer. <laughs> yeah, very good point. Like, I know I started cross-country. I did my first cross-country for school. It was like a... a, a... Uh, primary school little little carnival that we did every year, and I did it for the first time. I did it about two k's. I just couldn't stop throwing up because I'd never run anything longer than a hundred meters. So uh, oh, yeah. I was throwing up so much, and then I started it for winter sport for school. We do winter sport and summer sport, of course. I started for winter sport. I was really I was originally doing soccer, and my mum wanted me to work on my lungs, and I needed to work on my breathing, oh, yeah. swimming, of course. So uh, I took up cross country, and just just I, I really love it. It's really good. So would uh, you guys have? Quite how about you, Kayla? I know sport? you love your javelin, but yes, I do love my Sorry? javelin. Would you, do you guys have to have athletics yeah, um, for a summer uh, sport? I don't. I don't. I don't think we so so we we have um tennis, cross country, soccer. Uh, Basketball is for um, summer, of course. Uh, for yeah. Yeah, so cross country and stuff for winter, cricket, they don't have athletics there. at all. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. Course, um, but they don't do yeah, athletics. Definitely. They don't do any athletics. It's only cross country. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But well, um, definitely. on the agenda How today, on my notepad, we have. Yeah. How yeah, to um, pace yourself for a seven kilometer? On. How to pace yourself? How would I'd say you do start it? off. I'd say start off moderate. Uh, yeah. So, say you're doing the bay run. If you if you've never been to the bay run, um, I know Kayla and I can do it sometime. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. But um, I know for this bay run, it it's quite hill. Like you go on a lot of hills. You go up across the bridge, then it's downhill, then uphill. It's, it's a lot. So you got to start off. I'd say about sixty percent, and you go up the hills. You got to really push yourself hard on the hills so you don't lose your momentum when you're going back down them. And um, you yeah, got to keep a consistent a pace. Yeah, and it's something for, that we learn in swimming as well. Swimming actually does uh, come, uh, play a big part in running as well, like with the pacing. So on a 7K run, you would want to probably go at uh, 4.30 maybe, second K, keep it 4.25, yeah, minus kilometer. 5 seconds each kilometre. Finish your last two kilometres, I'd say, on a 4.06, 4 4.05. That's what I did on my 7K. I bring up my splits. I remember I did a 7K... Um, on Wednesday, sorry, Wednesday and Friday. Wednesday, I, I didn't do that well because um, I was quite tired. But then um, f- uh, Saturday, I did a, uh, one, and I did really well, actually. I got a three-minute PB, yeah. 29 That's minutes good. for 7Ks, yeah. So what I yeah, reckon so now if I pace myself for a 7K, the thing is it would vary if you're doing yeah. it by yourself and to when you're competing with other people. Because when yeah. you're competing with other people, you'd like to go out hard. No, I mean just hard enough to stay in around the top 10. And then you basically pick yeah. everyone off. What are your strategies for, like, going through your run? Do you have certain visual markers that let you know approximately how far you are? I'd, I'd say I look at my watch. Like, I'm not... My watch isn't here with me right now because I, I had <laughs> swimming before. And, but um, I'd say... Uh, 
I just look at my watch. If I'm going a, <laughs> if I start off with a four four forty, I know I need to pick it up. And my yeah. watch, it's Apple watches aren't really made for fitness. I know, but I got a mate uh, who's really fast, a national runner. I think he paces me a lot. Um, but he's really good. Um, and, and he, he probably does me. your paid he, max speed easily. Yeah, he yeah. Does um, your speed he, easily. he has a Garmin watch. Oh yeah, I heard <laughs> yeah, that really absolutely. Good. He's. I know he does that, but um, he um. He has a Garmin watch. I think they're meant for running. So uh, he just tells me the splits. And I, th- I know my watch is a bit off, which is a bit odd. But uh, as I said before, Apple watches aren't really meant for running. I know Fitbits and stuff yeah. are. So he yells out the splits and I um, I just I just stick with him the whole time. But uh, on Saturday, it was weird. Um, I was running and um, about, um, if you guys were on the bear run, it was about the three kilometer mark just after maybe. Uh, they started to, uh, him and three other kids started to really... Um, push it and uh, I just stuck with a kid uh, another kid who passed me a few kilometers ahead I stuck with him I stayed behind him and then I pushed off in front of him in the last few meters a few hundred meters and then one of the kids who took off with the my friend my mate who's the national runner he died like he he took off with them he stayed with them for about a kilometer and he just died like, yeah, everyone just passed him on the way on off. the way to the finish yeah and I remember I was watching um one of the younger kids who just took up cross country for my school he was, it's a very rookie mistake, took off really first, took off first. The coach was meant to pace you, and he <laughs> took off way in front of the coach, about 10 meters in front of the coach. He stayed there for about maybe not even half a kilometer, and then, then he, he finished off. dead last by about a kilometer. Yeah, it was crazy. But yeah. Um, what's your worst rookie mistake in javelin and running, Caleb? Uh, definitely a rookie mistake for javelin not warming up properly. Oh, That's very, very much for swimming as well, yeah. And then is it, I'm not really sure yeah. if there's any other rookie mistakes. Um, no, there's not really many rookie mistakes other than not warming up. And for running, definitely not warming oh, yeah. up, but if you go out too fast or too slow. Yeah. I think yeah, because, for swimming, mine, if I could, yeah. Because, like, say you go out too fast, you tire yourself. You go out too slow, you fall too far behind, and you don't have the strength to catch up to everyone as enough. Yeah, but those but, are yeah, my. Yeah, that, that's absolutely rookie. right. Um, yeah, um, so I think swimming. for swimming, my rookie mistakes. Yeah, swimming, my rookie mistakes. Definitely not stretching before a big competition. <laughs> Stretching, yeah, that's a, a lot of cramps. Uh, Caleb is the cramp master. We used to call him back at Marrickville. Um, I still and we used to call him Caleb Drusal, the knockoff Caleb Dressel. Yeah, I still, <laughs> and, um, I still have yeah, I remember our old coach Mark used to say it's the lactic acid or uh, the, just the acid that builds up in your legs. That yeah, the lactic cramps. acid cramping up, and it's like the lack of nutrients. Yeah, and, is um, it glucose, probably glucose. Uh, Bananas with magnesium. Yeah, magnesium uh, also helps. I know. Magnesium and, uh, yeah. And, um, what are your, um, yeah, so, no, I'll just finish off my rookie mistakes. I think my rookie mistake, definitely not stretching, uh, probably not eating enough, uh, meat the night before, like, like, like to carb load and stuff, pasta yeah, and like meat. Yeah, rice. Uh, I know, uh, yeah, rice, absolutely. Pasta, rice, bread. That's usually the good food for swimming in the night or a few nights before even. It's, I know it's not the best the night before because you've got to keep a consistent meal plan. And I know I just did an assignment uh, at school for PE and we had to do meal plans for athletes. Oh, I and, did um, one of those last yeah, year. Yeah, we, we, we learned all about the dietary requirements and everything for people with uh, like athletes and stuff. So, yeah, it was really good. So, we move on to our next section. Yeah, I think we got swimming coaching down. Yeah, and to psych, do you want to go psyching out your opponent in running? Since this is something I'm excited Oh, yeah. So, so, just to finish off our running segment, um, I got a friend. You know who you are. He always thinks he's the CEO of the Lockdown Biz. Uh, you know who you are. Um, and I'm not going to say his name for privacy reasons, but if he runs with me and he tries to sing in my head. He does cross country. Oh, 7K. I, I'm fine with this on a 1K. 7K. I have to listen to it for the whole way. And uh, he tries to psych me out. And it's crazy. Um, it's, it's really funny. And um, 
he just tried to sing in my head, and I just have to learn to not listen to it. And I know uh, my dad said that he used to run with his cousin, and uh, he said that his cousin used to ask him a question, like, how's your day? And um, he, yeah, and then the uh, talk, he, his the cousin asked him a question, like, how's your day, or, or tell me about work and everything. And, my, and the cousin used to shut up and just not talk, and my dad used to go on a really long explanation to use up all this energy. So that's, that's a way to psych out your opponents during... Uh, a fifteen hundred, even, but yeah, I think that's another something thing funny is, that I that I thought I'd mention. Yeah. yeah, another thing is like when someone has a proper warm up, like they're in the zone doing their warm up. That is definitely something that's in the zone, out. and you're doing a warm up, and somebody tries to psych you out. Yeah, I know swimming. Then you just ignore That's them. why the, the, all the yeah, I know that's why all the um Olympic swimmers they wear headphones. Like yeah, no, the all, funniest like, part is Caleb and like people like, who go so fast in the warm up though. Do you know oh, the people who swim so yes, fast in the warm-up, but you always beat them in me. competitions? Oh, yeah, that, that's a lot of people. I, know. I do go fast people. in the warm-up. I, I, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. Um, I think like that's finished off our running part. Then we go spin. on to... <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, swim that finishes coach? up our running part. Now we got swimming coaching. Swimming coaching. So... In the swimming world, there's not a lot of people or not a lot of coaches that stick around. So I know Caleb, uh, one of the coaches, um, who used to coach us at Marrickville, uh, th- there's a lot of mini, like the mini, you know, mini school coaches are like, like even schools and everything. They don't stick around for long, but, yeah. um, how would you expect a? how long would you expect, say you're the director of swimming at a place, how long would you expect a, yeah. uh, swimming staff to, uh, stay around like like a full time staff. How long? Like seven years? Seven five to seven? Mm. Mm, it depends. Is it the head coach? Would it be head coach? Oh no, like like you say you're head, the head coach, coach or just a normal the person. Coach. Oh, so say head coach, uh like would you say seven years maybe? Five maybe? Yeah, I'd I'd expect them to at least stay for a few years though. Like any coach to stay for a few years. Obviously, but yeah. What um, happened with mini squad yeah, coaches? That's very different. Coach? Yeah. yeah, but what I'm without coach uh, is yeah. it because he didn't have enough experience being a head coach or just not being a coach at all? Yeah, um, he was only head a, coach at Marrickville for only like a a year. Oh yeah, wasn't he? Maybe, maybe even less. Might, might, might have been 11, 10, 11 months. But also another big one is um, mini squad coaches. I I understand they don't stay around for long because they just they're fresh out of school, need to get a quick job that pays, and they have uni and everything. So I I don't like if I was a head coach at a place, I wouldn't expect them to stay long. But um, I would expect a full time job like yeah. to stay long because mini squad coaches are usually only casuals. But yeah, is there anything else you want to add to uh, swimming coaching? Definitely about trying to find a good coach that you bond with well. Yeah, absolutely. So That's definitely part of swimming, uh, yeah, correct me if you, uh, or add any parts if you want to, Caleb, in, in this segment, but uh, you need a good coach in swimming that you can bond with. If you have a coach that doesn't really talk to you, gives you hard sets, and they're just there to train you, then... For me, that's not the right coach. It's like it's yeah. like with your best friend. Like, would you like? You need a coach that you can be like, like uh, almost sometimes friends with. Yeah, as well as like, even um, though you like, have such good mates, they still need to coach you. Yeah, like like take it as your best friend for an example. Would you have a best friend that's there to support you and everything, but doesn't really talk to you in real life? No, like that's like a swimming coach. Like they're there to coach you, but that you should also have a good bond with them. Like yeah. Matt and. Matt and I and you and Matt, yeah. I'm not just talking about things um, nowhere related to swimming. Yeah, like like his like his uh Nike Air shoes Jordan, and, yeah, Nike shoe collection. Yeah, his Air Jordans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we always used to make fun of that, and uh, and yeah. So that that do, do you want to add anything else to swimming swimming coaching? It's not fun if you don't have a good coach. It's like with yeah. school, subjects aren't as good if you don't have a teacher you like. Yeah. Yeah. And it so, makes um, you enjoy the sport. Yeah, good point, good point, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that's basically all we have for today, isn't it? Like swimming, coaching and pacing. Yeah, And, and all... sucking out your opponents. Yeah. That's basically all I have to say. Uh, everyone, <laughs> so it was a great... Um, 
great first hey, episode up. back four months into the year. Four months into the year, and we haven't even uh, made one podcast. This is our first but we one. We will make so, a lot uh, coming up. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Caleb, you're you're off. You're off. You're off to somewhere in the holidays. So uh, have fun in your holidays. We won't see you in lockdown. We're off to will somewhere. You? Will we? Sorry. Yep. Somewhere. No, sadly not. And. Uh, <laughs> Yep. So, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, episode nineteen. If you're wondering, episode nineteen out of possibly a hundred in the future. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's been a long journey. We started this on o- in October 2021. So uh, yeah, thank you, guys, and uh, yep. Yeah, thank you, everyone. We'll see time. you in episode 20.